Windows Power Toys, it's one of these tools that I've been using for it seems like years. It makes my process a lot easier and I've talked about it in previous videos. At AU 2022, we actually talked about it pretty extensively before my class started. So I figured it'd make for a good video. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Take a look at the five top features that I have. It has a ton of features, but let's look at my top five and I'll link everything below and we'll just kind of look at all of them all. So let's get right into it. So Windows Power Toys is installable from the Microsoft website. So if you just Google search Microsoft Power Toys, you can find it pretty easily. You can also find it on the Windows Store for free. It is a free tool that is open source, which is awesome. I love open source tools. This one's open source and they're very, very proactive in fixing things when you report them, which is pretty awesome as well. So what we can go ahead and look at here is you can install Power Toys and they have all of the toys, if you will, uh, documented on this page as well. Apparently this has been around for a while. It's something I wasn't aware of. Somebody on LinkedIn or Twitter mentioned that these have been around for a very long time. I don't quite remember who mentioned that. So if I find it, I'll link their post below as well. But there are a ton of different tools in here for you to use. So let's go ahead and jump right into my favorite tools. The first one would be the color picker. So once you install Power Toys, it appears in your system tray as an icon that you can right click on and view the settings. All of these are the different tools. My first one that I really enjoy using is this color picker. So I design a lot of UIs for a lot of these plugins we build at Parallax and a lot of my Dynamo extensions that I build as well. A lot of times matching colors is pretty important and thankfully they have a tool for that which is really, really nice. Everything in the tool set has a keyboard shortcut. In this case, this one's window shift C. And you'll see as I hover, it's telling me what color things are. So that blue is that color and so on. Once I pick a color, so let's pick this blue, a window will pop up that tells you the hex color, the RGB and the HSL color. These are all very useful depending on what kind of development you're using. So it's really nice to have access to all those pretty quickly. And it does show you a few colors around it as well, which is pretty nice. You can copy this value, use it wherever you'd like, and you're good to go in that way. Bonus tip for you is if you have a mouse that has macro keys, so in my case, I have the MX Master 3S, awesome mouse, I'll include a link to it below as well. Uh, it does have the mapping available and I've mapped the up button as the color picker and the down button as another tool that's on my list, which is pinned and top, but we'll get to that one in a moment. So really nice to map those to those macro buttons. If you have a gaming mouse, even better because you can map all sorts of different buttons, which is pretty nice. So kind of a little bit of a bonus tip for you. So that is the first tool that is number five, I guess on this list. So number four on this list is going to be the file renamer. In any standard Windows Explorer window, you are able to rename files with this tool. The bulk rename utility is a magnificent tool. I'll include that below as well, but this one's a little bit simpler I've found. So I use it pretty often and it's a little less clunky in the interface if I can be honest. This is it after all we've been through. So what you do is you right click in the blank space of a folder. You can say show more options and you can power rename in here. This shows you kind of what you've named before, but it works with subfolders and goes on. It also allows you to rename folders, which is really, really useful. That was one of my favorite features of this. So what we can start to do is we can use regular expressions, case sensitive nature, all these things. You can even rename extensions, which is pretty nice. So if you had to rename a bunch of stuff to like do not use, you can absolutely do that as well, which is pretty nice. Like I said, you can include folders, subfolders, or just files. So if we start to deselect some of these buttons, we'll start to see kind of what happens as well. In this case, let's add a prefix to all these door families. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually replace the word door. We get a preview. We're going to replace it with 08 door for the master format prefix. And you'll see our preview kind of happening and we're good to go there. You will see that it got that one. So we could deselect this folder of hardware cause we don't want that. We do want all these others. I guess I don't need an extra dash here because it came with a dash. And there we go. All those look pretty good to me. So what we can go ahead and do is click on apply. It chugs through very quickly and all of those are now renamed 
if I go into my folder, we'll see that I have 08 door and all of these door families. Really great utility. Like I said, it renames folders as well. So this is really instrumental if you're doing some library updates or whatever you need to do. Awesome tool. I suggest you check that out as well. The next tool is another one that has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it for me, but that is always on top is what the tool is called. In Power Toys setting menu, you can find this at the very top here, always on top. What this does is enables you to be able to pin windows on top of others while you're presenting or something. This is extremely useful when you're using something like Dynamo to write files and you wanna show those files being created. So in this case, in this folder that I have, I'm going to go ahead and write a new text file from Dynamo right into it. A lot of times when you're working in Dynamo on a presentation or something like that, you'll drag these like this and you'll try to get it and you'll see that the window went behind my screen. So if I were to go ahead and write this file, which I just did, I have to reopen the window and show it once again. Not so fun if you're trying to show something that's happening live and you don't want people to think that it already existed or something. It's kind of like hiding that magic that happens in the background. So what we can do is the shortcut for this is Windows Control T, but once again, I use my mouse for this, so I have the mouse action tied to that. You'll get an audible notification that it pinned and a blue outline that you can control in the settings as well. So let's go ahead and write that file again and you'll see that that text file is written live and we can have this pinned on top. This is extremely useful if you make video tutorials. So this probably might be my favorite, but another one is my favorite that kind of helped me find power toys to begin with. So this one's just up there in the top three. So there you have it, that's the pin to top function. Another one that is extremely useful for presenting is the mouse utility section. So within mouse utilities, we have find my mouse. We have a mouse highlighter, which I don't use as much at all. And we have something newer that I haven't seen until recently, which is this enable mouse jump. Enable mouse jump, you can actually jump between monitors really quickly. Kind of nice if you're presenting, I think, but I've never used it. So I encourage you to check it out. Same thing with the crosshairs. So for all my AutoCAD users out there who used to make their crosshairs go across the whole canvas. If you're an AutoCAD user, let's hear from you. Only right in this section is all our AutoCAD users. You can now do that as well. So if I turn this on and I activate it, there's my crosshairs. Kind of cool, I guess. It's not something that I use, but it is there if you want it. My favorite part of this tool is the find my mouse utility. So if you press the left control key twice, it does that cool little spotlight search on the cursor till you click. I use this constantly while I'm presenting or recording tutorials. It's just so much nicer than that red circle that something like Camtasia does or something like that. And it just helps draw focus to whatever you're showing. So if you watched videos on this channel for a little while, you've probably noticed me use that pretty, pretty often. And that's what that tool is. You can also modify the appearance and the behavior, of course, and all those kind of things. So you can change your zoom and all that stuff to change how big it is. So you can kind of modify that as well. In this case, I'll leave it at my default because that's kind of what I've liked. And we're good to go from that point of view. The other tool in this mouse utility is Windows Shift H to highlight. So as you click, a left click is yellow and a right click is blue you can also modify that to change how it works. So if you wanted to make your right click a red, kind of like what Camtasia does by default, you can do that too. This is nice if you're doing tutorials where the clicking interactions are pretty important. So that way you can start to help people understand what you're doing. I don't use this as much either, but it is there and it's a really cool tool to kind of have baked in for you, which is awesome. All right. And the final tool on my list, first of all, I like all the tools. All of them are awesome. Open source is awesome. Free is awesome. Awesome stuff. Link below for this tool. Uh, the final tool here that led me to find Power Toys. So I've never really shared it, but if you kind of take a look, here's my desk setup. Uh, I have a wide monitor setup. And what that means is if I'm ever recording tutorials, a really wide aspect ratio is not going to work so good for everybody. So what that led me to find was a utility to be able to create zones, if you will, to record that works for everybody. That is called fancy zones. So in Power Toys, if we go to settings, 
we'll navigate to fancy zones and you'll see that there's a whole lot of functionality in here as well. What you do is you essentially define zones. So what we'll do is we'll do window shift the tilde key and you can modify any of these shortcuts as well, uh, which is worth mentioning. We'll see that I have quite a few different setups here. So I have one for while I'm recording. And what that means is I have a few different zones in here for me to snap to. I have one that's 1920 by 1080, which makes sense for most aspect ratios that people use. And I have a few kind of like children windows that I can dock to as well for dynamo or properties palettes or things like that. I also have, and we'll zoom out here hopefully, I also have these zones over on the outsides as well for me to be able to use for other things while recording tutorials. What's really great about this is you can swap between zones pretty quickly and have different setups depending on what you're doing. So if you have a Zoom setup for presenting on Zoom, you can have that one named Zoom and so on and so forth. And you can also have them different per monitor resolution. So I have a horizontal widescreen monitor and a vertical monitor as well. So the setups are different for those. And this helps me dock those windows. The way you activate it, so let's minimize this, is if you hold down the shift key, it starts to highlight all the different zones you have available to you, which is really nice. So in this case, I have all these zones available. So that's kind of that middle zone that I have and so on. So let's go to make sure that I'm not in a different version. We'll switch it back to my recording. And now as I hold down shift, I have the recording zones. So a lot of times I'll mount Dynamo over to the side like this to do whatever I'm doing. That way you can still see Revit. You can also do keep the top if you really wanted. And I also have this zone for when Dynamo needs to be bigger. And I have a zone in the back for the 1920 by 1080. So fancy zones is ultimately, it's my top favorite tool from this list because it's the one that led me to discover uh, Power Toys, which is awesome. Side note, there was an issue with uh, the fancy zones a little while back where windows that are child windows to a main program like Dynamo to Revit, they weren't snapping anymore. I opened a GitHub issue and the team was really fast to fix it, which is awesome. I love seeing active development on an open source project and the team fixed it really quickly. I included a recording of what I wanted it to do and there we go. We were good to go. So always be sure to check out if something's open source, if you can contribute in that way. In order to contribute to open source, you don't necessarily have to know how to code. You just have to know how to use the tool a lot of the time and developers love when you give them feedback. So that was really nice for them to be able to implement. So Fancy Zones, one of the big ones that I really like. Uh, it's one of the must haves if you're using a widescreen monitor. All right, so there we have it. That's my top five favorite tools in Windows Power Toys. Have you used it? If you have, let me know below if I missed anything that you really like for any of the tools that you use. Be sure to check it out if you're a Windows user. I think it's a must have, honestly, at this point. It helps you be so productive, especially if you have a mouse that has macros and things like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks so much for checking this out and we'll see you in the next one.